Tybee looking to bounce back, taking on Seguin on senior night with their playoff chances hanging in the balance. After a crazy first half, we pick things up with the Antlers leading 29-28 in the third. Carson Valverde scrambles, looking for Josh Vela, who makes the Matador's defense look literally like a Matador, taking it to the end zone from 50 yards out. After some careful consideration, the Zebras gave him the touchdown, 36-28, Tybee. Seguin can't stop an offense of you, me, and Stewart, but they can score like the Red Raiders. Mike Garcia takes it in from 36 yards out, pulling Seguin within 35-36. It's been an agonizing season for senior running back Hayden Schreckenbach, but in his final game at Antler Stadium, he broke out rushing for a career-high 269 yards and four touchdowns, including this one-yard plunge, putting the Antlers up 43-35. Not pictured as one of the greatest high school punt returns you will ever see by Preston Demery that put the Tybee up by two TDs. Shown is Chase Brown intercepting Garcia and icing the Antlers' senior night win. We knew their defense had given up a lot of points. And golly, our kids played so hard. We, we, it was nice having Shrek back full speed. Uh, we made some plays when we had to, and the defense stepped up and, and got the ball turned over a couple of times. But... Really proud of our kids' effort. It was, it was a good night for us. Harper was also looking for a bounce-back effort, and they found one, too. The Horns jumped on bracket early and just kept scoring on their way to a 47-14 win. Chance Lang accounted for four TDs, and Jaden Breedlove went over the 100-yard mark and scored himself. Harper travels to Junction next week with second place in the district on the line. It wasn't the offensive showcase that Tybee and Harper put on, but no one loves a grinded-out win more than comfort head coach Joey McQueen. The Bobcats ended their two-game skid and beat Blanco for the first time since 2010, 10-0. Jason Faulkner didn't get to 200 yards, but he got the only score of the game. The Cats are in the playoffs and will look to secure their third seed when they travel to Johnson City on Friday. It wasn't the Billies' night as Taylor handled Fredericksburg, pushing them to the brink of playoff elimination. The Berg needs to beat Memorial next week or their 2016 season will come to an end. No player has ever wanted a season to come to an end, but in Ingram it has gotten to a point where it feels like it might be that time. The Warriors suffered yet another heartbreaking loss. This one eliminated them from the playoffs. ITM has lost their last six games by a total of 60 points. They will look to avoid a season-long bagel in the win column when they travel to Randolph on Friday. OLH is facing a win-or-go-home situation in the final week of the regular season as well, thanks to a loss against Castle Hills. Jack Groff and Hunter Taylor continue to be one of the best pass-and-catch combos in the area, but unfortunately for the Hawks, it isn't translating into wins. OLH hosts San Antonio Lutheran on Friday. Aaron Walters tossed two touchdowns on senior night, but it wasn't enough for the Pirates as they suffered their first district loss of the season, 60-33 to De Hainis. The Warriors will look to secure the second seed in the district when they travel to Rock Springs to close out the season on Friday.